And as we continue with this week's Capital Outlook, it's our pleasure to be joined in this Capital Outlook profile with Senator Stefan Pappas. Senator, welcome back to Capital Outlook. Well, thank you, Craig. I appreciate it. You've been serving in the legislature. Um, this is You're in the middle of your second term in the Wyoming Senate. Tell me, Senator, what caused you to want to run um, after you, quote unquote, entered retirement, I guess, from the, uh, at least from the um, National Guard, the Air Force National Guard? Well, frankly, um, I didn't really have a, a burning issue, uh, uh, something that I, I wanted to change in the state. Um, uh, so many legislators sometimes have that uh, particular thing that drives them to, to run for office. Uh, I actually uh, started uh, my quasi-government career very young in life. When I was in uh, school at the uh, uh, as, as Arizona State University, uh, I became the president of the uh, school, the College of Architecture at, at the university. And, and by virtue of being a president of my college, I also sat on the first council of the university. So I was one of the senators on the first council from, from, from my college. And so um, I kind of enjoyed uh, learning uh, and, and working as a representative of a of a body of people, um, and then and then after after I um, um, left that position, um, I, I I joined many many organizations after I got back to Wyoming after I got my degree and got back to Wyoming, um, and I I tended to get involved in leadership in all of the organizations you know whether it be uh, the Air Force Association uh, what what whatever, there was, there was a multitude of organizations that I belonged to over, over time. And the chamber, uh, all of these, I uh, sought out uh, uh, positions where I could affect change in the body. So um, as I uh, grew in my career in the uh, National Guard, uh, I became the Assistant Adjutant General for the, for the air uh, side of the Guard. And uh, certainly had to interface with government because, you know, 4% of the, um, uh, the states, the, the Wyoming, Wyoming military department, uh, budget comes from the state government. And so we were always interfacing with, uh, with legislators and, uh, it was just, it brought back memories of what I did when I was a younger man in college. And so I thought <laughs> after I, uh, retire from the military because uh, it was a little difficult. Uh, we have had military people, uh, guard people in the legislature, but they tend to be lower ranked than I was. And so it was a little difficult to be a high ranked official and then uh, run for political office. So after I retired, I uh, decided that it was uh, something that I always had a passion for, giving back to the community, trying to help others of a bigger body outside of just my uh, world. And so that's, that's why I ran, uh, had no burning issue, just wanted to give back to the state, give back <coughs> to uh, um, uh, uh, Wyoming, which I love dearly sure. and, and hopefully help things out. You grew up in Cheyenne and at one time thought you might have a life in the world of physics. Is, is that right? That's correct. Yeah. My first, uh, I enjoyed physics uh, uh, when I first, was first exposed to it in, in high school. Uh, uh, went off to the University of Wyoming and uh, pursued physics, but after the first year, came to the realization that there weren't a whole, whole lot of jobs in Wyoming uh, that required a physicist. You know, it's not like you can open your corner physicist store, right? <laughs> I'd like to go in that store, by the way. I think it'd be a lot of fun. <laughs> I figured I'd have to, I'd be working for some big lab somewhere out, outside of Wyoming, probably, sure. uh, or teaching. And I guess you could teach physics, but I, I was not of the mind of being a, a, a teacher. So um, my father was an architect and um, I kind of liked what he did. And so um, um, I switched majors, stayed another year at University of Wyoming to get some engineering, went off to New Mexico, got my first degree in, in uh, uh, fine arts, which was with a major in architecture and a minor in anthropology, and then got my professional degree at Arizona State. 
talk about your architectural career just for briefly here. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. coolest building that I've seen that you designed is the Gateway Center at the University of Wyoming, but I'm guessing there are many cool buildings in your past. If you had to tell me the coolest, which one would it be? I think that that's, to me, that's the, was, was the most uh, enjoyable project to work on. It was a, uh, a great design, the, uh, the uh, uh, University of Wyoming Foundation and uh, uh, Ben Blaylock allowed us a lot of design uh, flexibility to do, to do what we wanted to do. Uh, uh, there's, there's, uh, there's not too many buildings like that that Wyoming ar architects could do. Uh, it, was, it was just a great experience and I'm, I'm fortunate to have been the, uh, the architect director for it. <clears throat> Those of us in Cheyenne see the C-130s flying around all the time. What, I guess, would you like people to understand about the Wyoming Air National Guard who don't live here, who don't see it day to day, who don't interact with um, the many men and women who serve in the National Guard at coffee or at a restaurant? What would you like to tell the folks in Wyoming? And there's a lot of people in Wyoming that don't because uh, unlike the Air, uh, Army National Guard, all the air assets are right here in Wyoming. We have a little bit in Camp Guernsey, but for the most part, they're all in Cheyenne. All the Wyoming assets are in Cheyenne. And so a lot of people in, around the state don't get to see us unless we actually go to their communities. And we used to do that. Um, it's been difficult uh, over this last year with the uh, COVID, but um, uh, the, the uh, uh, Wyoming Air National Guard is a very uh, important piece, I believe, to Wyoming, not only to our, to our national mission, we do have a national mission, a federal mission. We, fought, we fly uh, uh, 130s uh, in hostile environments all the time. In fact, uh, uh, we're just getting ready to see some, some of our Air Guard people come back here in March, I believe, um, but uh, uh, that we're deploying all the time. But but for the for Wyoming, um, the both the Army and the Air National Guard provides a great service to the to our Commander in Chief, the Governor. We're looking at you sitting in front of a beautiful background. Tell us what we're looking at. Uh, yeah, well, that's uh, looking uh, um, that's at our uh, family cabin, and um, it was a uh, a scene that was taken uh, just shortly, uh, just a little while ago, because I was up there last week, uh, and it's just between here and, and Laramie, uh, around the Harriman area. Uh, uh, it, was a, it was a beautiful spot for me just to, to get away from and uh, uh, clear my mind and you know, not have to, uh, to uh, uh, answer cell phones or email for a, for a while. <laughs> Senator, I wanna to talk to with you a little bit more about the road UC's charge because to many, it's maybe a little um, foreign, if you will. Why not just tax me at the pump? I've got to fill with gas anyway, and that'll pay the tourists coming through, truckers coming through will pay, et cetera. But I think that I have read that you're contemplating and are looking towards the future and understanding that, you know what, electric vehicles might be playing a bigger role in not only Wyoming, but our country within the next decade or so. So then how will that work? People won't be going to the gas station. How will we build our roads? Is that one of the reasons why a road usage charge is maybe the right thing to consider in your eyes now? Uh, yes, it is. I, you know, I've been studying this for the last two years um, and I've been attending um, uh, NCSL conferences, the Na uh, National Conference of State Legislatures, um, their transportation forums uh, and committees. And it's come, it become very clear and apparent to me that the, that the gasoline uh, tax uh, any fuel tax is unsustainable in the future. If you look at the gap, uh, the uh, the curve of of the uh, the difference between what will be funded by the tax and and what what the cost requirement is to maintain roads, it, it it's a it's a curve that goes up and up and up. And, and I forgot what the number was, but like in 2040, it's a it's it's a multi billion dollar difference. And gap so, is what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and 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 so the and the and the problem is it's 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 multiple reasons. Number one, our cafe standards have gotten better, right? So so per mile that you're driven on the road, um, you buy less fuel. Okay, 
So we've got more road damage, but you're buying less fuel. And so you're, 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 you're not providing the income. Second of all, um, you know, it's, it's been estimated that by 2040, 50% of the vehicles on the road will be an alternate fuel, whether it be probably electrical, uh, uh, gener uh, an electrical vehicle, an electric vehicle, but who knows, fuel cells are looking uh, promising as well. Um, but uh, especially with the, with the intent to get us off of fossil fuels, um, there's a push to be, to be all um, electric one of these days or all non-fossil fuel uh, uh, vehicles. And so it's not going to be sustainable. And the longer we wait, we're going to have a cliff out there. Uh, the, the, the other uh, idea is also that with a road usage charge, people... Um, vehicles, businesses, whatever, would be charged based on their usage, okay? Too, too many of us are always have been, you know, well, the government should take care of the roads and I should drive on it for free, okay? Uh, especially in Wyoming, we're not used to tolls, we're not used to paying to drive on roads, right? Um, but uh, somehow we have to charge the folks that are doing the damage. So in a road usage charge, there's classes of vehicles. I believe there's seven of them. Um, and some of them don't pay hardly any, like a motorcycle, doesn't do any damage. Uh, but a, an 18 wheeler, you know, is in a, in a higher class and it does the most damage. So they would pay a higher proportion than uh, you or I. The problem with it, and, and I think why um, it's going to be a, a, an issue passing is how do we determine how many miles you're going to drive on what roads? You know, a farmer may say, oh, I drive all my truck all the time on my own private land. On a dirt maybe, road. On a dirt I road. Yeah. And maybe I drive two miles on a, on a state road to get to the other field. But all the other time I'm on property. How do we do it? Now, there's a way to do that with technology. Sure. We can geofence all the <clears throat> all the public roads, but people have an issue with Big Brother knowing where they're driving. Sure. So that's that's uh, there are there are a couple of states that are Utah is doing it. Um, Omaha or I mean uh, Oregon's got a got a uh, a um, pilot program, and and there's different ways to do it. You can buy a, you can buy certificates that say you can drive ten thousand miles. And then, but then you've got to have an affidavit that says that how many of those were in state, how many, you know, because if, if you drive a lot of them out of state, you don't want to pay one of any taxes, right? So uh, it's, that's the biggest issue. Uh, people is, is trying to define <clears throat> who the users are and whether they've driven on our road, sure. how, how we collect the data. You are currently a member of and, and have been past president of the Young Man's Literary Club, Club in Cheyenne. And it's something you've told me you very much enjoy. What is it? And what is your um, role in the group? Well, I, I uh, yes, I've been a member since, uh, gosh, I think it's 1999 or 98 or somewhere in there. Um, it's it's a, a, a refreshing club to me. It's called the Young Men's Literary Club. There's not too many of us that are too young, although we're we're, we're trying to, to uh, uh, bring in younger and younger members these days. Um, it's a great, a great uh, organization. Uh, we do uh, meet weekly and uh, for uh, 45 minutes, we debate topics. Whatever topic we want is brought up on the club. Uh, we have active and lively debate on anything from politics to uh, uh, world of events to you know sports to uh, religion to whatever uh, it's a free for all and um, civil though I'll bet oh yes it's very civil um, mm -hmm. uh, on occasion uh, we get passionate about our beliefs but um, uh, we're, we're it's, it's always civil um, there uh, after we have our open debate then a paper is called for every member has to give a paper uh, and uh, it's on a topic that the program committee has selected for you. So you don't have a choice. You research the topic and, and um, um, 
uh, give the paper and uh, can you share with us what you have written about what you have been assigned a paper on yeah I've um, I, I've been assigned uh, uh, numerous papers over the years uh, um, I've written a paper about the uh, fire up in the northeast corner of the state in 1910. I've written about uh, prolif pro proliferation of uh, conventional weapons. I've uh, written on the Wyoming budget process. I've written on um, on um, uh, on uh, this last year. I wrote on the uh, uh, on Cyprus and its. Um, uh, the division between the Turks and the Greeks on Cyprus, because last January I visited sure. there. And so- uh, In your heritage. Yeah, and I actually did that. Uh, I did two papers last year and, and that one was a voluntary paper. So I was able to pick the, the subject. Uh, and, and there's just a, it's just a numerous, uh, the, the topics are just amazing. The program committee does a great job. So the, the, the paper's given orally for 20 minutes and then there's debate on that. Well, Senator Pappas, it's been a pleasure. Um, this is good, obviously a difficult session that has now started with the Wyoming legislature and we look forward to visiting with you again. I thank you so much for taking the time to visit with us on this Capital Outlook profile. Well, thank you for, uh, for uh, asking me, it was my pleasure.